let's start our discussion on bilinear transformation with frequency pre-warping. So as you saw in the previous video, when we tried to do bilinear transformation, we ended up with uh, a result where the JW axis on the S-plane maps to the unit circle, but the frequency was highly warped or distorted. So, and we did some calculations previously to try to keep distortions uh, very low, that is less than 1%. So that is by selecting uh, our sampling frequency as 20 times the highest or the frequency of uh, the highest frequency of interest. So in this lecture, we'll look at a method called pre-warping um, that will try to eliminate the frequency warping problem. So what we are essentially trying to do is the continuous breakpoints can be adjusted to new values in the compensation design process, such that the frequency warping will place them back to the desired breakpoints in the discrete domain. So before applying bilinear transformation, what we will try to do is, we will try with, with a method, we'll try replacing um, the poles and zeros so that the frequency is pre-warped. So when you apply Dustin's method or bilinear transformation, the pre-warped frequency will take us back to the desired frequency. So there are various or there are four steps when doing bilinear transformation with frequency pre-warping. So step number one is where we replace the poles and zeros. So every place where we see S plus A or S where A is some constant, we replace A by A prime so that uh, instead of S plus A, we have S plus A prime, where A prime is 2 over T tangent of A T over 2. So this is our S prime, sorry, A prime. So remember that uh, when the frequency, uh, when we apply a bilinear transformation, we get uh, frequency omega S, which is a tangent inverse. So by doing this, this is going to counter the effects of uh, that, uh, of uh, warping. So replace uh, A by A prime, where A prime is given as two over T, 10 A T over two. Step number two, we transform D S comma A prime. So instead of A, we have A prime to dz comma a prime. So dz comma a using Tustin's. So this is using bilinear transformation. And uh, so this is the step where you're going to replace s with uh, our bilinear rule, which is given here in this page, which is this two over t times z minus one over z plus one. So that's where you'll do that. Step number three. So in step number three, we need to solve for a gain k because when we transform, transform from s into z, um, we also need to account for this uh, gain. So amplitude scaling is not automatically satisfied and must be considered separately. Uh, if DC gain should be one, that is when you have low frequency transmission, evaluate the filters constant for Z is equal to one, the steady state gain is equal to one. Whereas for high frequency transmission, evaluate the filters constant for Z is equal to minus one. So over here, what we will do is simply in our, uh, in our ds, we will replace s with zero and whatever we get, that should be equal to k times dz comma i when z is equal to one. So that's number one. And the second one is where we replace uh, s with infinity and whatever value we get, 
in the z domain we replace z with one and that's how you can find k and step number four dz is basically k times d z comma a so those are the four steps uh, needed when doing bilinear transformation with frequency pre-warping let's look at an example so again the example is uh, a over s plus a ds is equals to a over s plus a so step number one is pre-warp that is replace a for all the poles and zeros replace a by a prime so in this case we have one pole at s is equals to minus a so we replace a with a prime which is 2 over t 10 of a t over 2 so we will get this equation when we replace a so it will be a over s plus 2 over t 10 a t over 2 step number two is substitute or doing bilinear transformation so in that we substitute s with 2 over t times z minus 1 over z plus 1 and that will give us this equation plus there will be again k so k is introduced to correct the low frequency gain to uh, ds when s is equal to 0 equal to 1 step number three we have to solve for k so when uh, s is equal to 0 in this equation we get ds is equal to 1 so when s is equal to 0 our d of s is equal to 1 because a over a will be 1 and then when s is 0 z is equal to 1 so d where of z is equal to 1 so we replace z here by 1 and what we will get is a over so k times a over 2 over t 10 a t over 2 so this will be equal to 1 so when this is equal to 1 and when we solve for k we will get k as 2 over t 10 a t over 2 divided by a so now we have solved for k next uh, the fourth step is simply dz is equal to k times this quantity so we multiply 2 over t 10 a t over 2 divided by a which is k with this and then we simplify we further simplify and then the final result is this so it says d of z when z is equal to e to the power j capital omega t we'll have the correct low frequency gain one and we'll have a break frequency at omega is equal to a so that means um the whatever our whatever our continuous frequency is uh, we will have our uh, discrete frequency equal to that so that's what it means next is properties of Dustin's method with pre-warping it maps the left hand plane of the s plane to the unit circle on the z plane with one to one correspondence so a stable h of s transforms to a stable h of z there is no aliasing so aliasing effect is uh, reduced a wide band sharp cutoff h of s is transformed into a wide band sharp cutoff h of z it matches the frequency response for breakpoints and for zero or infinite frequency and compresses the response at omega equal to infinity to omega t is equals to pi so omega 
equals to pi over t. So basically what it does, it compresses the response. So in our continuous frequency can be from zero to infinity. <clears throat> and this method basically compresses the frequency response to uh, omega t over pi. Sorry, zero to omega t over pi. So the impulse and frequency response are not perfectly preserved. Next, let's look at Franklin's pre warping method. So in this method, we choose a critical frequency for which warping is to be corrected. So we have to choose a particular frequency. So let's say if you're designing a filter and you have one particular frequency of interest. Let's say if you're designing a power supply filter and your frequency of interest is F is equals to 50 Hertz or something like that. Then you choose that particular frequency for which you want to perform, which you want to correct the warping effect. Then rewrite the continuous transfer function by replacing S with omega C. So omega C is the critical frequency. critical frequency. So omega C times S over omega C. So we replace S with S over omega C and then we multiply um, it by omega C. Then we replace omega C in the denominator with its pre warped value. So the pre warped value would be 2 over T 10 omega C times T over 2. So in this case, um, S will become this. So S over two over T, 10 omega C over two. So we do not replace the numerator omega C with the pre value, only the denominator. So this omega C will remain as it is. Next, you apply Dustin's approximation. So replace S with uh, two over T, Z minus one over, Z plus one. So these are the four steps when you're applying Franklin's pre warping method. That is, if you want to call it warping at any critical frequency of interest. Net, next, let's uh, look at an example. So the example is H of S is equal to S. So a simple example. So suppose we want the discrete differentiation to be exact at frequency omega c. So we rewrite h of s as h of s over omega c, which will be equal to replace s with s over omega c and multiply it by omega c. So we get this. Next, pre warp omega c, which divides the s. So we pre warp this omega c with the pre warp equation, which is uh, 2 over t 10 omega c times t over 2. And then we substitute for s uh, the Tustin's uh, or the bilinear rule, which is 2 over t z minus 1 over z plus 1. So in place of s, we replace s with this. And then when you further simplify, you get this omega C over 10 omega C times T over two, whole thing multiplied by Z minus one over Z plus one. So this filter will yield the correct derivative at omega is equal to zero and omega is equal to omega C. So this approach is based, uh, based on the example just given, modifies the Dustin's approach by letting S is equal to omega C over 10 omega C times T over two times Z minus one over Z plus one. So remember that Dustin's rule is instead of omega C over 10 omega C times T over two, it was two over T. So this approach modifies the Dustin's rule by instead of 
by replacing 2 over t here with omega c over 10 omega c times t over 2. So we can just substitute this and we can get our result. So it automatically corrects Dustin's approximation at critical frequency omega c. And um, note that as t gets small, this approximation approaches the regular Dustin's approximation. Because for very small values of uh, omega c times t over 2, this 10 omega c times t over 2 will be approximately equal to omega c times t over 2. So when you divide omega c by omega c times t over 2, you'll get t over 2. And that will result in the regular Dustin's approximation. <laughs>